And it shall come to pass after these things, when the time of the revealing of Yeshua is fulfilled. He shall return in glory. Then all who have fallen asleep in hope of him shall rise again. And then we shall say, O oh, clap your hands, all ye people, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is terrible, he is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us, and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob, whom he loved, Selah. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises unto our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. The princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God, Yahuwah. He is greatly exalted. Hey brothers, hey sisters, Adam here with the Parable of the Vineyard YouTube channel. As always, I pray that you're doing very well strengthened in faith, and eyes to Jesus Christ, who we've come to know as Yeshua HaMashiach, who is our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. May he live forevermore. Brothers and sisters, this is part two of a series, and I recommend watching part one first before continuing here. You should see a clickable link showing up on the screen now. There will also be a link in the description box if it is not showing for you. First and foremost, let me apologize for the delay in making this video. Right after making part one of this series, Yahuwah, that is our Heavenly Father, put an idea in my heart to switch the focus on my channel from making videos weekly to conducting a weekly live stream on this channel and also Wednesday nights, a Bible study with the Christian Truthers Fellowship Group. Please consider joining us here live on Parable of the Vineyard every Friday, that's Shabbat, at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's every Friday at 8 p.m. Central. We go live here on YouTube on this channel. This live stream is a church or gathering or congregation, whatever you want to call it, where we first and foremost glorify our Heavenly Father through Yeshua HaMashiach and discuss His Word, prophecy, and anything related to the body of Christ that's not being discussed in physical churches today for whatever reason. With this being said, let's dive right into part two. In part one, we saw much transpire. We saw the destruction of Jerusalem, the angels hiding and preserving the Ark of the Covenant, some very interesting dialogue between Yahuwah and Baruch, concerning the desolation of Zion, the importance of the law, a glimpse of the end times, the order of terrors that will seize the earth, how the wise would understand that it is the end times, and how we should eat of the manna again, which can be interpreted as literal for the future, or honestly, a figure of speech for the books that were sealed and hidden by God, just as he said it was going to in the book of Daniel. And now it's open to us, and those that understand love and long for it more than they do earthly food, just as we are now realizing. So we open now in chapter 30 of 2 Baruch, and as we heard from the beginning of the video, we see the scripture in which Paul quoted from. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13-18. through 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yeshua died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus Yeshua will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with a trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Hallelujah. And last but not least, we can't forget verse 18 and what I want to do for you right now. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And I agree. Because regardless of what happens, brothers and sisters, regardless of how all this goes down, regardless of whether we live or die, we will see this day, and that is our blessed hope. And in this, we will rejoice as it continues in chapter 30, and we will surely rejoice. 
I know many of us dwell on these days, and as we should. We're not living in our permanent state right now, but are merely pilgrims, or sojourners. And as it's written in 4th Ezra, which is also known as 2nd Esdras, which many scholars recognize how interchangeable 2nd Baruch and 4th Ezra are, and some have even called them twins. Open your ears to this, brothers and sisters. 2nd Esdras chapter 9 And it shall be that everyone who will be saved and will be able to escape on the account of his works or on account of the faith by which he has believed, will survive the dangers that have been predicted, and will see my salvation in my land and within my borders, which I have sanctified for myself from the beginning. Then those who have now abused my ways shall be amazed, and those who have rejected them with contempt shall dwell in torments. For as many as did not acknowledge me in their lifetime, although they received my benefits, and as many as scorned my law while they still had freedom, and did not understand but despised it, while an opportunity of repentance was still open to them, these must in torment acknowledge it after death. Therefore, do not continue to be curious as to how the ungodly will be punished, but inquire how the righteous will be saved, those to whom the age belongs, and for who the sake of the age was made. Take hold of this, brothers and sisters, as we continue to dive deeper into the end times and the tribulation at hand. Remember this and trust in Yahuwah, that's our Heavenly Father, no matter what, even if it seems hopeless for a time, as He will deliver us. Now, what we'll see next in chapter 32 are some instructions that we must heed. Chapter 32 but as for you, if ye prepare your hearts so as to sow in them the fruits of the Torah, also known as the law, it shall protect you in that time which Yahuwah is to shake the whole creation. Keep in mind, brothers and sisters, this was written well before Yeshua came, and these words do not replace our trust in him. But also remember, he is the word, the whole word, made flesh. And regardless of what the modern day apostate church is teaching, or whatever kind of things men would teach you, we are not a lawless people. Let me say that again. We are not a lawless people. Let's refresh what Yeshua said himself in Matthew chapter 5. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, which hasn't happened, brothers and sisters, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Brother and sister, do you want to be called least or greatest in the kingdom of heaven? I know most of us just want to get in, but let's take these words for what they mean. Words mean things. The Bible means what it says. I don't care what any crafty doctrine of men would teach you. We are to listen to what Yeshua said. Period. Also, Let's not forget this portion of scripture in which has frightened many from Matthew chapter 7, and certainly words that neither you nor I want to hear. So let us be wise in this matter. Matthew 7. Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Iniquity can be translated into lawlessness. Therefore, whosoever hear these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. So, the things that take away from this, brothers and sisters, as I just said a second ago, iniquity can be translated into lawlessness 
one thing that a lot of us miss is what we don't realize is who he is talking to are believers. These are believers that did many mighty things in his name, did many mighty works, cast out devils. It's pretty scary if you think about it. So what is he actually talking about here? He said to those who professed to him and did many mighty things in his name, I never knew you. Who wants to hear that? Well, according to scriptures, how do we know him? I know this is going to sound a little cheesy, but guess what? It's as easy as one, two, three. Well, let me explain. That's 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him. You ready? If we keep his commandments. I'm going to read that one more time. 1, 2, 3. 1 John chapter 2, verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments. Very simple, brothers and sisters. Very simple indeed, and just as Baruch was shown. And remember, Jude prophesied about this very time. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men, crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. We see the word lasciviousness, which is another branch of the word lawlessness. Brothers and sisters, let no man deceive you. We are to be a set-apart people, holy, just as he is holy. And just as Peter said, a royal priesthood. It's time we act accordingly. Chapters 33 through 35 are some dialogue between Baruch and the remnant of people who were left after the captivity. And Baruch explains that he is to withdraw from them and enter what remains of the Holy of Holies to receive a word from Yahuwah. Then he's going to return to them. In the Holy of Holies, Baruch wept and cried aloud as such. Oh, that my eyes were springs, and my eyelids a fount of tears. For how shall I lament for Sion, and how shall I mourn for Jerusalem? Because in that place where I am now prostrate, of old the high priest offered holy sacrifices and placed thereon an incense of fragrant odors. But now our glorying has been made into dust, and the desire of our soul into sand. Again, parallels with 4th Ezra, and how much sorrow for the people of Yahuwah. In chapters 36 through 40 is what's called the vision of the forest, the vine, and the cedar. In this, we see a dream Baruch is given while he's in the Holy of Holies, to which he sees a forest that is surrounded by mountains with jagged rocks. A fountain appears and brings great waves and uproots the forest and brings the mountains low. All that was left was a single cedar, which was also cast down. A vine arrives, destroys the cedar, which brought sin and wickedness continually. After this, the vine grows into a valley of unfading flowers. The interpretation is then given by God and is broken down as the four kingdoms that was shown to Daniel in chapters 2 and 7, and the last being the worst, which is the Roman Empire which still stands today with control, yet most are clueless to it. It's also mentioned that the way of truth would be hidden by this group that controls the world, and those with opened eyes see it. Yes, they've done the best they could to hide God from us, but God's waking us up. And he's showing us the real truth. Praise God. Praise Yahuwah. Hallelujah. The fountain and the vine are Yeshua being revealed in his first and second coming. And to root out all evil. The valley of unfading flowers is us who will be like him forevermore. Hallelujah. Next. In chapter 41 we see the crux of what really needs to be understood in these end times. Baruch is given a vision of the future, the end times, 
and he sees many people and a clear division among them. The division is obedient or lawless. And I answered and said, For whom and for how many shall these things be? Or who will be worthy to live at that time? For I will speak before you tonight everything that I think, and I will ask of you regarding those which I meditate. For lo, I see many of your people who have withdrawn from your covenant and cast from them the yoke of your law, or Torah. But others again I have seen who have forsaken their vanity, which, as a side note, many of us are now doing and waking up to realize the lies of this world and the truth of the word, our Savior, Yeshua, and obeying him and fled for refuge beneath your wings which i must point out a connection with enoch chapter 39 enoch 39 and in that place mine eyes saw the elect one of righteousness and of faith and i saw his dwelling place under the wings of the lord of spirits and righteousness shall prevail in his days and the righteous and the elect shall be without number before him and forever and ever and all the righteous and elect before him shall be strong as fiery lights, and their mouth shall be full of blessing, and their lips extol the name of the Lord of spirits, and righteousness before him shall never fail, and uprightness shall never fail before him. There I wished to dwell, and my spirit longed for that dwelling place. And there heretofore hath been my portion, for so it has been established concerning me before the Lord of spirits. Continuing back in Baruch, he asked what happens to the two different groups, and those which forsake his commands were brought low, and those who forsook their ways and returned to him shall be exalted. For corruption shall take those that belong to it, and life those that belong to it. Just as Moses said way back in Deuteronomy 30, see I have set before thee this day life and good, and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Remember. Don't let any man deceive you, regardless of how convincing their argument sounds. Yeshua, Jesus Christ, did not come here and lay down his life willingly so we can be a lawless people. We are saved by grace through faith. And the willing sacrifice that Yeshua performed for us defeated death and the yoke of bondage of sin and the dominion it held over us once so that we may have circumcised new hearts that desire his ways as opposed to our old ways and by the power of his grace, the ability to walk just as he walked and to pick up our cross and follow him. If you believe what the traditions of men have told you, that God has two different people and two different paths of salvation you have been lied to. As we know from Galatians 3, we are one body. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, Yeshua. For as many of you that have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Those who do not believe in Yeshua have been cut off from the people. We are Israel, the holy nation, and the church, or ecclesia, is of the Most High God. We have been lied to and our identity stripped. Many of us who are waking up for no reason other than Yahuwah, our Heavenly Father, calling us and removing the blinders, we see yet another awesome parallel in 4th Ezra chapter 13. And as for you seeing him gather to himself another multitude that was peaceable, these are the ten tribes which were led away from their own land into captivity in the days of King Hoshea, 
whom Shalmaneser, the king of the Assyrians, led captive. He took them across the river, and they were taken into another land. But they formed this plan for themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the nations and go to a more distant region, where mankind had never lived. That there, at least they might be able to keep their statutes, which they had not kept in their own land. And they went in by the narrow passages of the Euphrates River, for at that time the Most High performed signs among them, and stopped the channels of the river until they had passed over. Through that region there are a long way to go, a journey of a year and a half, and that country is called Arzareth. Now some say this is Europe and some say America, but it's hard to know for sure. But know this, God did say he would disperse all his people all throughout the nations as he recorded in many verses. Back to Ezra. Then they dwelt there until the last times, and now, when they are about to come again, the Most High will stop the channels of the river again, so that they may be able to pass over. Therefore, you saw the multitude gathered together in peace. But those who are left of your people, who are found within my holy borders, shall be saved. Therefore, when he destroys the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, he will defend the people who remain, and then he will show them very many wonders. We will finish part two with a final reading from chapter 44 and leave you with many things to test, to prove, and to pray on for confirmation as we are to walk in uprightness and righteousness just as it was penned from the very beginning, as we see in Enoch chapter 91. Enoch chapter 91. For I exhort you and say unto you, beloved, love uprightness and walk therein, and draw not nigh to uprightness with a double heart, and associate not with those of a double heart, but walk in righteousness, my sons, and it shall guide you on good paths, and righteousness shall be your companion. For I know that violence must increase on the earth, and great chastisement be executed on the earth, and all unrighteousness come to an end. Yea, it shall be cut off from its roots, and its whole structure be destroyed, and unrighteousness shall again be consummated on the earth, and all the deeds of unrighteousness and of violence and transgression shall prevail in a twofold degree. And when sin and unrighteousness and blasphemy and violence and all kinds of deeds increase, and apostasy and transgression and uncleanness increase, a great chastisement shall come from heaven upon all these, and the Holy Lord will come forth with wrath and chastisement to execute judgment on earth. In those days violence shall be cut off from its roots, and the roots of unrighteousness together with deceit, and they shall be destroyed from under heaven. And all the idols of the heathen shall be abandoned, and the temples burned with fire and they shall remove from them the whole earth, and they, the heathen, shall be cast into the judgment of fire, and shall perish in wrath and in grievous judgment forever. And all the righteous shall arise from their sleep, and wisdom shall arise and be given unto them. And after that, the roots of unrighteousness shall be cut off, and their sinners shall be destroyed by the sword, shall be cut off from the blasphemers in every place, and those who plan violence and those who commit blasphemy shall perish by the sword. And now I tell you, my sons, and show you the paths of righteousness and the paths of violence. Yea, I will show them to you again, that ye may know that will come to pass. And now hearken unto me, my sons, and walk in the paths of righteousness, and walk not in the paths of violence. For all who walk in the paths of unrighteousness shall perish forever. Now, to finish up with Baruch chapter 44. For the judgment of the mighty one shall be made known, and his ways which though past finding out are right. For if you endure and persevere in his fear and do not forget his law, the times shall change over you for good. And you shall see the consolation of Zion because whatever is now is nothing, but that which shall be is very great, for everything that is corruptible shall pass away, and everything that dies shall depart, and all the present time shall be forgotten, 
nor shall there be any remembrance of the present time which is defiled with evils for that which now runs runs into vanity and that which prospers shall quickly fall and be humiliated for that which is to be shall be the object of desire and for that which comes afterwards shall we hope for it is time that passes not away and the hour comes which abides forever and the new world which does not turn to corruption those who depart to its blessedness and has no mercy on those who depart to torment and leads not to perdition those who live in it for these are they who shall inherit that time which has been spoken of and theirs is the inheritance of the promised time these are they who have acquired for themselves treasures of wisdom and with them are found stores of understanding and from mercy have they not withdrawn and the truth of the law have they preserved for to them shall be given the world to come but the dwelling of the rest who are many shall be in the fire brothers and sisters many many tough things were said today and if you're struggling with presenting yourself as a living sacrifice do not worry things don't change overnight the Holy Spirit will work its work within you as you continue on your path of working out your own salvation with all fear and trembling. Cry out to God, Yahuwah, and ask Him to teach you to walk in His ways, to follow His commands, and to hear His Torah or instructions. If you need a short video of motivation, please watch this video titled 2018 Get Back Up and endure as we see the end approaching. A link should be on screen, and there will be another in the description box below. I pray part two of this series was a blessing to you, and I look forward to part three, in which we will find out really gratifying information about our glorified bodies and what we can do with them. As always, brothers and sisters, test everything by the word and your personal prayer time with the Father always seeking his ear in the name of Yeshua. Now, all glory, praise, and thanks goes to the Father of Spirits through Yeshua, our King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And brothers and sisters, lastly, I just want to remind you one more time that if you're looking for a fellowship, if you're looking for a church, you don't have to go too far. Our Heavenly Father has allowed us to gather together in these end times from afar. Every Friday night at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, we gather here on the Parable of the Vineyard YouTube channel, myself and Brother Justin from the Christian Truthers channel. We get together every week and we go over spiritual meets like this. We discuss hard topics that aren't being discussed in the pulpits of America today for whatever reason. So if you're looking for a fellowship, if you're just looking to connect with other believers that are like-minded, that understand that we are in the end times and understand that we are to read all of God's word, we'll look no further and join us. I pray that you join us this Friday at 8 p.m. Central. Always, always, all glory to our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, through our King of Kings, Yeshua HaMashiach, who is our King and High Priest,